You may be familiar with the term flying monkeys as it relates to the groupies that surround a narcissist. And many times people will ask the question, are the flying monkeys themselves narcissists or are they just cowards? Now, actually, the answer is a combination of both. Let's see if we can get an idea of what's going on between the narcissist and specifically the flying monkey that allows this pattern to continue, sometimes for a long, long period of time. Think in terms of a puppeteer. Uh, sometimes the puppeteer has the strings and the puppet is below and the, uh, the puppeteer is dangling the, the puppet below. Sometimes the puppeteer has the, a hand inside a sock and they're maneuvering on behalf of the puppet. Either way, that can be an apt description of what the narcissist is doing to that uh, flying monkey. Uh, let's understand first on the narcissist side, uh, they, de uh, they build themselves up by diminishing other individuals. And they're, uh, of course, easily critical and all towards other persons, but they like to gather people around themselves that they have diminished who then make them look good. And it, it's kind of a twisted way of logic. I, 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 I hold you in low regard, but I want you to be inside my inner circle. Uh, that's the way the narcissist thinks. And the flying monkey has kind of decided, well, okay, since you're in the power position and I don't really have a whole lot of power going on in my life, I'm going to go ahead and stick with you. And they become a narcissist useful idiot. And that's the way they operate. Now, when a narcissist engages with that flying monkey, they have various standards, if you will. I don't know if that's the right kind of word, but rules of engagement for the flying monkey. For, the, for example, one of the things that the narcissist implies to the flying monkey is you can't be on anyone else's team. Uh, you have to be on my team. And they're, they're actually paranoid when that flying monkey shows any kind of loyalty to somebody else. And so they have all sorts of tricks to keep them back in the fold. In addition, um, basically, they'll say you have to maintain a very tight sense of loyalty to me. And they have all sorts of measuring posts that they have to measure that, nar that uh, flying monkey's loyalty to them. The narcissist will more or less imply when others question me, you, the flying monkey, need to come up with good excuses on my behalf. And so the flying monkey learns how to do that. Uh, also, uh, the the, uh, the narcissist will imply to the flying monkey, I want you to keep reminding me, whether it's through word or deed, that you hold me in highest esteem. And so uh, the narcissist loves it when they're regaled by the flying monkeys and the flying monkey is just saying, oh, great master, you're so wonderful, you're so good. And in addition to that, then the, the, uh, the narcissist, uh, one of their rules is you can never, ever, and then let's underscore that, never, ever, criticize me or disagree with me. Now, putting yourself in that flying monkey's position, you might ask, why in the world would anyone subject themselves to treatment like that and rules of engagement that, that seem like that? Because they are indeed in that diminished position. Well, let's, let's recognize there are multiple things going on there. Uh, typically, Flying monkeys are groomed with all sorts of promises about how good it's going to be because of being in the presence of that narcissist, uh, whether it's inside a family system and there may be money or there may be activities or access to certain people that that involves or inside a, a place of work or socially. If you hang around with me, you're going to go good places. So the, the, uh, the flying monkey has probably been groomed. Um, typically, that flying monkey is a weak-willed, uh, non-assertive kind of person. They've learned to subjugate their own preferences uh, to go along with that stronger narcissist. Often, the, uh, the flying monkey is quite gullible. They just kind of go along with anything. And they can uh, often have a lack of insight or analytical thinking, or sometimes it's worse. Even if they do have insight, they just set it aside anyway so they can go along with the power broker. Um, the, the flying monkeys tend to be very impressed by the narcissist and vicariously they can take delight in the ways that the narcissist wields power and they're over there thinking, oh, I wish I could be that strong. And so, uh, you can see that, uh, that they can, they often understand and know what's going on and perhaps you can even feel sorry for them. Because frankly, they're uh, in a long-term uh, pattern of being brainwashed 
And sometimes it's the only thing that they know. But then at some level, you want to thank yourself or say out loud to the flying monkey, why don't you grow up? <laughs> you know, open your eyes. Don't you see what's going on? You have this narcissistic person whose life is built upon dominance and control and lack of empathy, uh, manipulation and uh, superiority. And you're going along with that and propping it up. And yet, even if you talk with these people like that, uh, they'll continue to go along with the narcissist priorities. It's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm committed to it. They can reject the same people that the narcissist rejects. It's like, well, that's what that narcissist wants me to do, so I'm still willing to do that. Now, behind the scenes, the flying monkey may actually say yeah, to you, yeah, I know that he's kind of a bossy or overbearing or uh, she's in a, constantly in a bad mood. But, you know, things happen and don't we all have our faults? And they kind of gloss right over it. They may uh, tacitly acknowledge there's a problem, but not really. And they're not going to do anything about it. Uh, uh, basically, uh, the flying monkey is two-faced, uh, which is a nice way of saying they're liars. Uh, it's like on one hand over here, they may imply, oh, I, I, I'm a really nice person and, and, and I can get along with anybody. But when they're around the narcissist, they kind of, uh, they uh, just jump right in line and just do whatever they uh, have to do to keep that person's favor. And so it's, it's a very interesting dynamic. So see, let's ask that question. Well, does that mean that the flying monkey is indeed a narcissist? Well, let's think about that. When we talk about narcissism, we're talking about a lack of empathy. We're talking about being able to manipulate and uh, having control and being pathologically defensive. And when you break down the pattern of the flying monkey propping up the narcissist, what you have is a lot of covert tendencies toward narcissism. Uh, they may feign empathy, but they don't really care what's going on between the narcissist and the rest of the public out there. And they may not do the active manipulation, but they're playing both sides. They, they may say to the public that they're a nice person, but with the narcissist, they turn into this mean apologist. Uh, there's a lot of passive aggressiveness that is required of the flying monkey. They're pathologically defensive. Uh, they, they themselves have a wall of protection around themselves. And they're doing more than just propping up the narcissist. They're saying, no, I'm willing to be complicit with that narcissist. I'm willing to go along and whatever I have to do to keep their power base going, sign me up. So do they have a, a lot of narcissism in them? I, my answer is, yeah, I think there's a lot of it. Now, what I'd like to do is pull that flying monkey aside and say, hey, I've got news for you. When the going gets tough between you and the narcissist, you're expendable. Don't you see that? And the, the, let's keep in mind the narcissist is loyal to the narcissist and to the flying monkey will say, you can be ditched. But in order for the flying monkey to break out of their uh, role, they would have to come to terms with their own pervasive fear. So instead of doing that, they'll, uh, they may protest if you try to pull them away from the narcissist. And they may say something like, you have no idea how miserable my life would be if I uh, started breaking ranks with that narcissist. Or they may uh, imply, I wouldn't even have any place else to go. This is my team. This is my tribe. And, and I'm, I'm all in with that person and the other flying monkeys. Or the, the, if they're honest, they may, uh, the flying monkey might imply, well, if I leave the narcissist, I'd lose too many benefits. Or maybe if they're really honest, they would say, I really don't know myself uh, outside the narcissist's influence. And if you say, well, you can learn how to know yourself, then they may say, well, it's too late or it would be too much trouble, which is what I refer to as their psychological laziness. Don't make me have to think. Don't make me have to reason. And then it might be that if you continue to try to pull that flying monkey aside, they may in honesty say, well, if I ditch the narcissist now and go back toward all these other people who have kind of been perplexed by me anyway, they're going to think that I'm two-faced. And my reaction to that is, well, you already are. 
And so, and people are already thinking it, uh, maybe they would actually have some, uh, some uh, goodwill toward you if you could at least admit it. And so when you try to plead your case to the flying monkey, most of them will refuse to adjust. And basically, they're implying it's too late. I've already sold my soul to the devil a long time ago, and I'm in it for the long haul. Now, this leads you to conclude uh, to that flying monkey, the narcissist represents power, and that's more appealing to the flying monkey than honesty or decency or healthy principles. And that's sad. And then we ask the word, uh, the question, are they, um, are they just, are they themselves narcissists? Or are they just cowards? How about if we were to say, both. Now, recognize when we're dealing with flying monkeys, we're dealing with people who have indeed, you know, sold themselves down the river, so to speak. And uh, there's there's a conscious uh, uh, willingness on their part, uh, which is why I say uh, they're they're troubled. Uh, but as long as you see that and uh, and you realize what's going on there, I'm hoping you can keep your distance there so that you don't get pulled in by all the futility that they generate. Because I'm hoping you can be a person that's steady, that stands for dignity, respect, and civility. And in doing so, that is how you find your true peace.